All right, let's look at using Secure Shell to use keys instead of passwords with putty so you can log in. So let's start with first downloading what we need from the putty website. So this is the URL to the latest versions of putty software. Uh, we can download the putty client right here. I already have it on my machine, so I don't need it. But I want to generate keys, and so I need the putty gen utilities. So I click on this thing, and I download it. Let me save that right there on my desktop. I go ahead and launch the putty gen client. When I have the putty gen client loaded. I can click generate to generate a private key pair. Then you need to move your mouse over it, some kind of random pattern over this screen right here. If you stop moving the mouse or if it's off of the that little section there, it will not generate anymore. So you have to make sure you move the mouse correctly and it will generate random bits. All right, now we want to create keys. You can either use a key passphrase or not. It is more secure to use a passphrase, but we're going to skip that just so we can see how it works. And I want to save both a public key and a private key. So if I save the public key, I save this as um, my server.pub. Save that. And I save the private key. Do I want to, yeah, I want to go ahead. And I save that as private dot pk save that all right then i have both my keys saved and it's ready to go now i want to use the keys to authenticate with my server i'm going to go ahead and close this and i'm going to launch the putty client here's my putty client and so my machine is 10.230.1 50.1 and I want to log in automatically so I'm going to go over to my logging my, what's my, uh, my connection I guess under the data I'm going to pick my username so I'm going to log in as the Joseph user you can pick root pick anything you want so I have a user Joseph on that machine and I want to use my key now right now the server doesn't know about my key. I'm going to browse the key anyway. And the key is my private key right there. Click that one. Open that. And so it has my private key listed right there. And then I can try clicking open. And it says the key is different because I've changed my machine. And so I have this login screen. So I type in my password. And then I get logged in. All right. Now, the issue we have here is that this machine does not know the key that I'm using to log in. So I have the, I'm using, using the private key when I try log in, but the server needs to know about the public key. So I'm going to load the public key up. And the best way to do that, I think, is to open it up in something like Notepad++ or WordPad. Cancel that. Um, so here is the key right here. So I just select all of this stuff right here. You don't need to select all of it. What you really want is from this capital letters type stuff right here, always end in this section right here. This is the key in the middle. That's what you want. And this is the information that says what it is. All right, so actually, I'm just going to grab this portion, the part I care about, and do copy. And with PuTTY, I can um, then go into my .ssh directory if I have one. If I don't have one, the best thing to do is try SSHing to something um, or create the directory. Now, I'm using um, Security Enhanced Linux, so I can use uh, I can make the directory .ssh. And then after making the directory, it'll have the wrong context type. So I'm going to do restore con.ssh to make sure it has a correct context type. Then I go into the .ssh directory. And you can see there's nothing in here. Then I want to create an authorized 
keys file. So I do nano authorized keys. And this is the list of keys that can automatically log into my machine. And in this file, I want to right click to paste what I have just copied. Now at the end of each of these lines right here, there is a new line character. I want to get rid of that. So I want to go to the very beginning of this, this bottom line, press the backspace, make sure there's no spaces here. I press control A to jump the front line, backspace, control A, backspace, control A, backspace, control A, backspace, control A. And now this is not quite the right format. Um, what I want is to get an SSH key and the SSH key is has a, has a little prefix. The prefix for my key is going to be SSH dash RSA space. So if I put that there, then it will know that this is an SSH key with the RSA encryption algorithm. And that's important. So I exit out, press Y to save, save it as authorized keys, press enter. And then I take a look around. I can see that the permissions are kind of okay. I want to change permissions a little bit. So I do a ch mod 600 on my authorized keys. So I really don't want people to just look at there and actually maybe it doesn't matter. All right. Now I want to exit out and try logging in again. Um, all right. So exit and I will relaunch my putty client. Now that I have my putty client launched again, I can see that I don't have my host name here. I really should have saved that from earlier. So 10 uh, 230.150.1. Put that in there. Go back to the data section. Add my username, which was Joseph. And then down in the SSH section, SSH off. I'm going to browse to my key again. And my key was this private PPK. Open that. And now instead of opening this, I'm going to go back to session. I'm going to save this as something someone calls my 10.230.150.1. And I will save that. Now I can load this whenever I want to load it and it'll have all the information ready to go. Now I try opening. And it refused our key, which means I did something wrong. I go to the .ssh directory again. I can see the authorized keys file is there. Um, I think part of the problem might be that maybe the permissions for this directory are too much. So I can change this to chmod700 on my .ssh directory, which should make it so that no one else can go into the SSH directory it really doesn't want people getting there and messing things up. So I take a look at the SA directory. I take a look at the SE Linux context. The capital Z. I can see that it has SSH home T, which is important. I exit out again. And then I can close this up here. I'm going to relaunch my putty session again. Click on this and load it. And now I am ready to try it again. I click open. And this time it authenticates with the public key. You can see that it did not prompt me for a password. So the things we learned is that in order to create the keys, you have to get the putty gen utility to generate a key. You have to then save both keys. You need to log into your machine. You need to go in there, create a .sh directory. You need to make sure the SE Linux context is set correctly with the restore con. You need to make sure the permissions are set to 700 so that only you can get in there and make modifications. Go in there, create a authorized keys file. And in this authorized keys file, you want to make sure that you have one, one single line with the SSH-RSA prefix in the front of it. A single space, no extra spaces in the middle, and you don't delete any of these characters because that would be bad. And then make sure your authorized keys file is set to 600 to make sure that other people can't mess with it. 
and then you should be able to log in with PuTTY with the keys without using a password.